Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator. Today I'd like to show you how I made this card. I showed it on my blog recently um, and I had a lot of positive feedback about it. I wasn't planning to do a video because I think it's rather fiddly um, but I thought that I would make one and I would leave you to decide for yourselves whether you think it's too fiddly to do. So I'm going to start off with letting you know the card pieces we're going to need. I'm changing my colour, I'm using Lost Lagoon today. Um, so the card base you need is Whisper White and it's eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, scored at four and one eighth and folded and that is 21 centimetres by 14 and a half centimetres, scored at 10.5 centimetres and folded. Then there's our Lost Lagoon layer and this measures 4 inches by 5 and 5 eighths inches which is 10.25 by 14.25 centimetres. Then a top layer of Whisper White which measures 3 and 7 eighths inches by 5 and a half which is 10 by 14 centimetres. Then we have a piece of DSP which is the Wild Flower Fields Designer Series paper which at the moment is available as a free gift during celebration for every uh, 40, for every £45 you spend you can choose a free gift out of the celebration catalogue. Um, if you don't have your copies and you don't have a demonstrator please get in touch and I'll be happy to send them to you. And the other cardstock you're going to need is you're going to need um, some scrap of Whisper White for the kettle and also for the flowers and you'll need some scraps of Old Olive for the stems and the leaves. The first bit we're going to do is the kettle, um, the teapot, I'm calling it a kettle because that's what Stamping Up have called it. Um, I imagine that's what um, it's called in um, North, um, no, in the States. Um, over here we would call it a teapot. Right, okay, so the die I'm using is from the Cups and Kettle Framelits and this is the one I'm going to be using. Oops, so i just pop that on the top. And then just run that through. And there we have it. One teapot. One teapot lid all beautifully cut out. Let's pop that back over there. And do you like a little handle as well? Okay, so that's that and that. Right, I'll put the big shot out of the way. That's the only job we needed that for, for this one. Right, now we need quite a few little bits and pieces here. Um, so I have prepared a lot beforehand, but I will show you one of each. So first of all the stems. Oh, it looks like I've already got five of those. Never mind, I'll still show you what I, what I do. Um, I use my fringe scissors. These aren't actually the stamping up ones. I had these before stamping up brought theirs out. Um, and I haven't really got around to buying some new ones. It seems a little bit extravagant really. So what I need to do is I'm just going to slice down here right as far as the scissors will go and then with my normal scissors I'm just going to cut those off not that one 
and I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to cut it in half. If you put the twisted end up the top there it's a lot easier. And I'm just going to rest it on my blade like that. And then being very careful not to cut my fingers, just going to cut, cut that up to the top. Okay, doesn't matter if they're not perfectly straight, but the others I will keep for um, future cards I do. So let me, how many do I need? Five. Five. Okay. Uh, oh, I've already got five of the these as well. Um, that's what that was going to be for. Um, I won't cut any more, but I used my um, Bird Builder Punch for my branches and what I do with these because when they're punched they all look as if they should be laying down that way because they've got that like curved edge going downwards but I want to to go that way so what I do is I get my pencil take the two that I want and I curve them back the other way I mean, visually, you know, there's like a right side and a wrong side to um, punched shapes. And this just helps to make it look more like the right side. Just by curling it over. And do that one as well. Okay, so they look as if they should go over there. They're not a hundred percent as nice as these but they're a lot better than they were. Right so I've got those. Um, I need flowers so I've done four of them. Let me get another scrap here. I don't know what I did with... oh here it is. And the stamp set I'm using for that is Petite Petals. Um, this card here I used that one but on this one I'm going to use this. I like to ring the changes when I'm doing these kind of things because I think it helps you decide, you know, which ones you like and which ones you don't without actually having to waste any of your um, cardstock. So that's Lost Lagoon Ink. Let's move that out of the way. And then I'm going to punch that out with the Petite Petals Punch, which is this one. There isn't a right and wrong about lining this punch up. Just line it up and that's fine. So I have the flowers, teapot. Okay, so I think I have everything there. Right, uh, this is my top layer. I am just going to put my tablecloth on it. Okay, I think I will probably do it like that so I've got as much of the blue in as possible and I'll be losing that. And my teapot will be going on there a little bit. And I am going to try and make sure that's nice and straight. And then I'm going to draw a little line just across the top. So that's the start of my teapot and that's the end of it and that's where my line is. That's just so that I know to make sure all my stems go into that entrance part. And what I do is with, oh no these are my five aren't they? What I do with these, and if you do use um, the uh, fringe scissors you will find that these do tend to curl. Not the end of the world. A tad bit irritating but that's about it. Right okay so I put my five down. This is the fiddly bit. You have to judge where you're going to be putting everything otherwise you could finish up with all your flowers sitting on top of each other which is something that you really don't want. 
So the first thing I do is with my flowers, now that's the tallest one, the one in the centre, so that one's going to go there. Oops. And then, um, how have I done this? That one is more or less touching. So I'm going to have to move that over slightly. So that'll be about there. And this one is almost underneath that one. Okay, so I'm just making sure that all my stems are coming in. That's close enough. And then this one comes at a normal, what well, I would say, normal sort of diagonal, diagonal line down. And then the little one. And that one, I want it to come lower than this one. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to adhere those down. And yes, I do have my silicone mat and you can use whichever glue you prefer to use. I'm going to be using Tombow and I'm going to move that one out first and just put a tiny tiny bit. If you want to use snail on this you can do or um, the very very fine tip glue that we have or you could use Fuse, um, but as you know, I do prefer Tombow. And as long as I have my tweezers with me, which I can't see at the moment. Um, oh, here we go. So I know that needs to come up to about there. It's going to be coming down into the centre. There we go. Right, so the next one will be this piece here. It's got itself wedged in between my tweezers. Okay, so that one's going to be right. And then the last one, I'm going to cut a little piece off. I want the stem going into the teapot, but I don't want it protruding from underneath. I just keep checking my flowers as I'm going just to make sure that I'm still on target. Right now this one's going to be the one that's um, touching the top flower. So I need this one still to be quite long. Okay, so that'll be about there. Right, it's going to come down, something like that. And all the time I'm just making sure that I'm staying within my pencil line here. Then this one. I think maybe I should have cut a bit of this one as well. We'll see. Right, you're going to go there, coming over a bit. And you, I want it a bit higher than this one. There. Right. So that's about right for that one. It'll be easier to cut that one before you start gluing it down. Right, so we've got those pieces. Now we're going to do these. And just leaving those in place, 
going to put some glue on each of the leaves and then a little bit down the stems. This doesn't need an awful lot of glue because we are going to be putting the flowers on top. Okay, so all I'm doing is judging where my flowers will be going, so where do I want the leaves? And you just need to be careful of this branch because that's going to be visible. So what I do is once that's down like that, I just try cutting it up straight by the stem so it looks as if it's actually joined onto the stem. Okay, we're going to have another one of those. Oops, get off. Um, I have that one there, that one. Now I want one to come over this side. So that's one of these. Now this really is one of those cards where you're going to see this fiddling about and you're either going to say, oh, that's not too bad, I'll have a go at that, or blow that for bananas, or whatever your favourite exclamation is. Right. There we go. So that one's going to be coming down. That one's going onto that stem, so that's all right. And flower is going to be coming onto that one. Right, so that's quite going to be quite a good flower arrangement, I think. So where do we want this one? It's going to be coming in here somewhere. But this time the stem's going to come down below my line, which means I can cut it off. I don't have to worry about trying to get it to meet up with another stem. fine and then this one would be coming down here somewhere obviously you don't have to follow the same way that I'm doing my flower arrangement here This one I think I will just pop into the middle there. Right, let's just move that one out of the way. we go. Then that's my flowers, or at least all my stems and my leaves arranged. So next I'm going to put my, oops, I'm going to be losing my flowers at this rate. That's it, I've got the five there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this onto here and then I'm going to cut my edge off. Let's bring that back. As you can see, this um, designer series paper does have some more plainer designs if you don't like such a fancy tablecloth on your card. In fact, that greeny one would look quite nice, wouldn't it? Certainly go very well with the um, leaves and the stems. Right, OK, I've just made sure that I've lined it up down this side, along the bottom. Hopefully when I turn it over, yes, and I can cut that bit off.
Right, now I'm going, oh, I'm going to remove my um, pencil marks. If you find this a bit difficult to do, then I would just suggest that you put your teapot a bit higher, just to cover it up. Um, I think this is coming off okay. Uh, all except that piece there. That's oh, all right. A little bit of perseverance, and I've encouraged it to vacate. Right, that's just left some little bits on there. This is my um, adhesive eraser. That's because I'd upset a bit of the uh, glue there. I don't know whether I'd squeezed it out or whether it was already there, but um, the, I'm this gets rid of all of it, so that's good. Okay, so where's my teapot? I'm going to put this on with dimensionals. Oh, no I'm not. I've got a stamp on it first. Oh, I'm glad I thought about that before too long. Right, let's pop that back down. Right, I'm going to use You Are The Nicest and that comes from the Picture Perfect set. That's this one here. These are all shown at 70% of their normal size. They've had to shrink them down because there's so many um, to shrink them down to get them all onto the front here. And the other one that I really like is this, You Are Made Of Wonderful. I think that and that are really lovely um, sentiments. So that's that one. I'm going to line my teapot up with a straight line on my grid paper. I'm going to use um, Old Olive Ink. And I find that because this is photopolymer, and I've lined this up with a straight line, then I'm going to line up the UR at the top there as a straight line as well. And then when I'm happy, I'm going to go down. Now I'm just going to hold it for a few seconds just so that the paper can take the ink off of the stamp. There we go. That is really lovely. So now I'm going to put my dimensionals on. I'll have four as part of the main body of my teapot, but I also like to have something on the spout and the handle. And on this one, I've got this thin bit here, and what I did down this side, in fact let's do it again so I can show you, um, here we go, I just cut down here very thinly, this side I've done better than the first side, it's much thinner, you see that? The thing is with this, I don't know if you've seen my shaker card that I did, made a video of, but I explained that if you cut it really nice and thin, and then you take the two backing sheets off, the dimensional becomes very, very pliable, and it's just so easy to pop it down and make it go around corners. Bring that bit round a bit. That's it. Okay, so can you see how I made that come right round the corner there? It's absolutely brilliant. So now I want one on this side. I'll use a fatter one, I think, here. So 
I'll take both pieces of paper off first. Whoops. Now oh, that one's already gone. I'm going to pop it there and then make it come up round the spout. There we go. Okay. So that will make sure that the teapot is on here. It's got plenty of support. that's there. Just move those out of the way. Now I'm going to put my card together. Let's pop that on there. I don't want to lose that. Take one backing off. That's it. But I'll keep that safe till next time I need it. Okay. Now Tombow just stick this onto my card layer and then the base. You can use snail or whatever your choice is. onto my actual card base. Teapot lid, which I'm going to pop down. Uh, which way shall we do you this time? That way, I think. So I'm just going to put dimensional along the bottom here, um, and I'm going to use that little piece there. I'm using this one that's just like uh, little pyramids. Or houses, I suppose, I don't know. Um, so I've left the top free so that that can just sit on this bit which is already elevated. There we go. Um, what, oh, flowers next. What I'm going to do is I'll use my paper piercer. You may like to use your um, piercing mat for this, but just to give your flowers some dimension. So just five, oops, yeah, that's right. Five of these. Tip them upside down because then I will put just a little bit of tombow on them. There we go. Right, so that's one up at the top. One coming down by the side, just about touching. Oops. And 
that's sticking on me more than it is the, uh, the Tombow sticking on me more than it is on the flower. You probably notice that my flowers aren't going exactly where I put my stems, but at least they are following up like that. And there's enough room. You can see the leaves, and it's coming up as a nice little arrangement there. May not be perfect, but it looks good. As long as I haven't got any stems coming up above out of the top of the flowers. No, that's fine. Okay, so the next thing I need are some pearls. to use the medium size, no I think I'll use the bigger ones for this, what did I use, yes bigger ones, There we go. Pop that back in there. Let's just get these up a bit. If you wanted to, you could go with the flowers with some Wink of Stella, get a little bit of glitter on there. Also, if you wanted, you could put a little butterfly on here somewhere. I was tempted to put one on, actually sitting on the uh, teapot spout. Well, that would look quite nice. But there we go. Alright, so there we have it. That's today's card. That's the one I introduced you to at the beginning. Um, I have two more. This is one where I used the small flower, which comes from um, the stamp is from pictogra pictogram punches. And the punch is the little flower punch from the Itty Bitty Accent Punch Pack. And the last one where I combined the two flowers is this one. Um, and I used one of these type flowers, the spotty one. And I used this in the centre and finished up like that. Which I think is quite nice. So there you go. Was that too fussy for you? Um, I'd be interested to have your feedback. I hope you like it and I hope you really think it's worth giving it a try. Um, many thanks for watching my video. If you have any questions, please ask. I'm always very happy to help you. If you've enjoyed my video, please subscribe to my YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. If you'd like to purchase any of the um, products that I featured here today, please click on the 24-7 link that you'll see in the details below um, and that will take you straight to my 24-7 online stamping up shop. Also, um, depending on what you're watching the video on, you should be seeing all the measurements and uh, the products on the screen. If you're not, um, you will find them all in the details, again, in the uh, details below the video. Um, so, many thanks for joining me today. Until next time, happy crafting. Cheerio.